Hey everybody, so I'm back with the Buick and I got another video for you. This time we're talking about tail light bulbs. So this is the condition of one of my tail light bulbs. Um, I got to take a look at what it is. I'm not sure if it's running light or brake light, but uh, as you can see, you're actually looking at a piece of the cap and I couldn't get it out. I tried my uh, pliers and all of that, couldn't get it out. So I'm just going to end up replacing it. So what I'll do is I'll cut this uh, electrical tape away. I'll make my connections a little bit further in and I'll match what I'm seeing as far as wires to the existing one. So the replacement part I got is a PTC 1126. This is a socket assembly. I got it from Rock Auto. I think it was around, I don't know, five, six, seven bucks. Um, Either that or I ended up picking it up at advanced. It may have been advanced. I just needed it quickly. So here's what it looks like. It looks really good quality. And by comparison, you could take a look at the factory one and it has a little bit of gunk on the inside of it, but overall it looks pretty much the same. And what I'll be doing, I'll just be making my connections right on up. Um, if you look at the, the button for it, everything lines up perfectly. So I know I'm replacing the right part and should have a, a good uh, rear signal coming out of it once, once everything's swapped over. So here goes. So if you're looking to do this at home, you're going to need a few things. I have heat shrink tubing. I also have these mechanical connectors for joining wires. You can solder the connections. I am just on the side of the belief that solder is great, but it's not needed for everything. But personal preference will vary. Um, I'm using these LED bulbs. I don't have any regular ones right now. I'm not sure if they're gonna play well with the, with the circuit, but we'll see. Of course, the PT. And you will need either a light or a, uh, you know, a lighter or a heat gun just to shrink the heat shrink. Um, let's see if there's anything else here. You'll also need some wire connectors or wire pliers. I use these to skin the wire back from this mechanical portion up here and to mechanically uh, lock these by inserting it in the blue section and pulling it, you know, together with that, uh, with that motion. Now it's important to note that this is black, but this middle one is brown, so. start off with black first and you don't have to skin much away say what is that a quarter inch or something like that just enough for you to get enough wire exposed and I don't need the entire length of this uh, this pigtail so I'll cut that down as well maybe half tempted to, to keep it but learned from my years that it's a lot easier or a lot cleaner of an install to uh, to deal with what you got there so if you don't know how much wire to leave it's a little bit less than this slip it on this way Get it on, on the right area. Slip that conductor over and down. Give it hell. I always like these mechanical seals because they with solder you're just 
solder depends on your ability to solder. <laughs> With this, it's a lot easier to crimp. Everybody should be able to crimp. Not everybody can solder. And you don't have to heat it up or leave it on too long. Once it starts to shrink and gets to a point where you can clearly see the outline of what was there before. Like, I know that's my connector, leading and trailing wires. We're good to go. So I'll just rinse and repeat to this one and that one. We should be all set. That's all there is to it. Got a perfectly integrated switch now, or socket now, and fits my ball perfectly. Now, whether these LEDs work or not, I know a few of them do. Um, that will be remain to be seen. Hopefully they work well with the wiring, but if you're a Turbo Buick owner, you know wiring is everything with these cars, so. We'll get it wired up and see what happens. Just to wrap up the whole rear taillight situation, it all worked, even the LEDs worked, but I had to switch out the flasher. So this looks to be the original one, 552. You just replace that with one and uh, it was right back up and running for me. So if you need one, if your lights are turning off, but just not blinking, look into this. Let's talk turbos. I have the original stock 84 turbo that I had on this car. Long story short, this is what came on the car when I first got it. And as you can see, there are broken blades, a lot of play, and the nut is loose as well. It's just basically a core at this point. And I swapped this one out with a unknown turbo for 150 bucks that I got from a really cool guy on Facebook Marketplace who was local. So, that one has been giving me problems. I'm not building boost with that one either. So, it was time for me to upgrade. And I went with Brian Bissonette at Bison Performance and he hooked me up with a really nice T04 E60. And it's just a slight upgrade over the stock and it's supposed to be able to move over, what, twice the CFM of the old one. I think this one's pushing out 390. This one should be somewhere around 760. Please don't quote me on that. Um, so close to double, if not double, the, uh, the air movement. So we will get this installed, turn up the boost, and you know, get everything cracking. But there are a few things that you have to do. So, this is the original drainage tube. As you can see, it has some, uh, it's crushed right here. So I'll be using the one that's already on the truck, or on the car, but um, we will need a gasket and then it'll sit on here and then go onto the new turbo. We also need to move fittings. So we have the uh, compressor, the vacuum that we'll need to move over from this one to the new one. We'll also need to make sure it's generally clocked in the right uh, orientation. It looks, it looks perfect, but you, know, you can never really tell until you get it on the car. On the other side, you'll have the oil supply line that you'll need to install. This one is bare. And then there is the exhaust housing. So, this one has the stock hockey puck style. And as you can see here, there's not one that comes with the turbo. Now, I have future plans to do downpipe and all of that. But the thing is, I won't be able to, I'll have to, I'll have to weld in my wideband and I'm trying to get this out on the road today. So hopefully we can get this old housing off, put it on here in the short term and then for the longer term, we'll pop it back off, put on our brand new um, downpipe, 
weld in our O2 bung and have a screaming setup. So that's what the plan is for now. We will uh, get all of this off and, and see what it's looking like. All right, so before I put the fittings on, I need to tell you all about the most important thing about putting on these turbos. Use a Teflon paste. Do not use Teflon tape. Um, from, because what will happen is, if you put Teflon tape on one of these and it gets sucked into the turbo, you're gonna starve the oil, you're gonna starve the turbo of oil, and it's gonna be a very bad day for you and your turbo. So use I got this at Ace for $2.99, as you can see. Pipe thread compound TFE paste contains Teflon. So that's what I use. It's safe to use on water, gas, oils, fuels, everything. So you just put a little bit across here. You make sure that you uh, get the entire surface and then you screw it right in. These threads are clean, but make sure your threads are clean. Make sure you're using this stuff and not Teflon tape. Cannot say it bad enough. So. Here's a little closer look at it. Use that, you won't have any problems. So we got the old one out of the way. We got brand new one, oil line on, compressor wheel on, I mean, not compressor wheel, um, compressor fitting, the, the T fitting on, and we're looking good. Of course, like earlier, I, I still have to put this on, but I'm gonna scavenge it off of the old car and the one that's on the car right now. But I think what's left to do is just to get the turbo out. Let's do that. I'm gonna give these as much time to dry as possible. I still got my gasket right here for uh, for the oil drain line. Yeah, let's do it. All right, so that was easy. If you take a close look at the inlet, this is where the engine mates up and sucks in. You're going to see oil, lots of it too. So clearly uh, these turbo seals were leaking. So this is also a turbo that uh, has no business on, on the car. Switch gloves real quick. So what else have I noticed? Let's see. We need to be able to swipe this from it. And 
and may have done a really, really good job of that orange RTV, so I'll need to do something to get that off of there. off I'll clean that up now taking a look in here I'm seeing like a lot of black soot but and that's part of the course not sure if there's anything too alarming there I got my second gasket that goes toward the throttle body I'll need that this one has a fair amount of play as well none in and out but probably a little bit too much side to side Seems to have the gasket on it. Is it? No, no, the gasket's on there. So, okay, good. This is just that. So, I'll use this, clean it up, use this as well. We'll be good to go. There we go. Okay, so right now I've installed the turbo. I've reset not only the chips computer, but also the Gen 2's computer. So we can tune from a fresh start. I haven't added anything to main scale. So this is just as the chip comes. The chip was made for an 87. So naturally they use less fuel than the hot air variants. So in any case, we're gonna start it up. We're going to take a look, see how it does and once we take it around the corner for a little bit, we're gonna take a look, make sure everything looks good, and then we'll start to dial it in from there. But uh, let's see if it starts up. All right, so it's the next day. I let the car warm up, took it on a short drive. I did have to add quite a bit of fuel into it because it was starting from that baseline. As you saw, the O2s were in the 600s. That's pretty lean. So bringing it back into the 800s is what you really want with, uh, with our cars here. So I reach a good stopping point with it. I need to investigate some other things because it's not quite making the boost that I want it to. So we're going to continue to investigate that, but I want to turn my attention to something else, but that is for the next episode. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, share, subscribe if you like what you're seeing and plan to have some more episodes of Buick content specifically coming up soon. I've bought my next round of parts, so I'm excited to see what uh, what happens as I tear into another part of the of the car. So, again, thanks for watching.